Hi friends, thanks for joining us for April 2015 recipes for healthy bags in vegan gal. We're making some wonderful Mediterranean themed recipes. You're going to love them. We are now going to be making Lois Hickey's lemon hummus. It is really flavorful. We've got no oil going on here in our hummus, which is wonderful. And uh, Lois is a lovely woman who's been to many of my retreats in Michigan and she's now advanced to you know, guest chef, and that's what happens if you keep coming back to my retreats. Uh, we, we, we cook all the time, and so people get excited, and, and she developed this recipe, which is really flavorful, flavorful and uses uh, a lot of the lemon zest. So the first thing we're going to do, and I bought some organic lemons, is just peel off some strips of the outside yellow part. Maybe try not, well, you're going to get some of the white part, but that's okay this is all good flavorful and good for you i think you know just go ahead and, and you know peel a bunch but you might not want to use all of it i think that'll be fine because it's going to be pretty strong ah. and then we're going to juice the rest of that lemon carefully it's going to be a little bit harder to juice without the peel but we're going to use all of the juice from the lemon so if you can slice it a little thinner than i did that might be better because now I'm trying to kind of juice it in a interesting way here. This is gonna work. So lemons are really good for lowering your stroke risk, combating cancer, maintaining healthy complexion, um, preventing asthma, boosting the immune system. They're just full of antioxidants. Lemons are so good for you. And um, you can also make a hummus with you know, so many different ingredients. What you can add to this would be roasted red pepper or banana peppers or, you know, any kind of veggies you like. So one of the tricks of the trade with garlic is to start the machine, leave it running, and drop your garlic in. I'm going to do that with some of the lemon peels too to get them chopped up a little bit. Right, I'm going to go for three lemon peels and stop there and then Taste it. Here's a couple more chunks that that should go ahead and combine there when you when we, when it get, get it blended there. Then we're going to just put in a couple tablespoons of tahini. You can adjust you know how much tahini you use, a little salt and pepper, and this is a really quick yummy hummus. A little salt and pepper. We're just gonna let the machine run. You can, it smells good, right, Linda? Yes, it does. It does. It looks good too. I love lemon. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water. You can also save a little bit of the juice that if you bought canned organic garbanzo beans, you can um, throw in a little bit of that to just kind of give it a little more, you know, be able to cream it up better. Okay, this is looking really good. It's it's nice and creamy, but it's it's still thick, so you can um, you know make it to your desired level of consistency based on how much water you put in. Um, you can adjust all the ingredients in hummus. You can't really go wrong. Just be careful, maybe that you don't uh, over salt it. Mm. I love the lemony flavor. I think I'm going to add a little more salt. I did not over salt it. <laughs> this is a really nice consistency and I just added a little bit of water. But um, it's delicious, perfect, and we're ready to make our little sandwiches with this lemon hummus. Okay, hi. We are now going to use our lemony hummus to make these wonderful like, raw sandwiches. And you want to spread the hummus generously on the inside of a toasted pita. You can buy whatever kind of pita you like. These are nice whole wheat kind. And Lois wants to make sure that you spread the hummus very generously on both sides of the pita so that with every bite you get a nice creamy, crunchy, you know, thing going. So you're gonna do that, right? So hey, we've got that done. It's all, it's all spread in there well. And then we're going to throw in some raw veggies. Now this has carrots and radishes and broccoli and um, red cabbage. And you can make your combination like that or, you know, whatever you have on hand. And then I'm going to put a little pea shoots on top. 
but you can do a little cilantro and any kind of a salad dressing if you like is optional. This is a spicy peanut vinaigrette. We're just going to put a little bit of that on there. Oh, Linda and Chris are going to really enjoy these little sandwiches. And the, the raw veggies are just really good. A lot of people are going into more of a raw diet. You want to eat you know, more raw vegetables. Uh, not cooked over 115 degrees is what the raw food movement is kind of all about. So you keep all the enzymes in the food. Um, but even if you just incorporate more raw foods, you're gonna. Most people will eat less calories, again because this is such high fiber foods, and um, they're really just so good for you, packed with antioxidants. So this is going to be a nice combination where we have a, a good combination of some raw and some cooked together, and it's delicious. Enjoy. Gonna make a skinny iced mocha coffee. Kind of like a Starbucks, yummy, yummy, chocolatey, sweet iced coffee, but without the calories. Uh, really, really good for you. Um, this is uh, Nubia Cafe, which is an instant coffee brand that I love. It's really great. There's no bitterness to it at all. There's no aftertaste. It really tastes like coffee. In fact, I make it quite a bit. I just run water through my coffee pot and you wouldn't even know it's instant coffee. So. Um, they have a, a website and I highly recommend them. They also have some nice antioxidants put in the coffee, which uh, African mango and pomegranate and another couple things. So it's it's a good, um, really, really quality instant coffee. But any instant coffee will do. I'm using, um, let me measure because I'm just using one of their packets, but it's okay. It's about a tablespoon, a little bit less than a tablespoon of instant coffee. And then I've got um, a couple tablespoons of cocoa powder and a couple tablespoons of organic sugar. I'm gonna put just a pinch of salt, which you wouldn't think is necessary, but it's really good. Um, and then a little a half a teaspoon of uh, vanilla and about eight or nine ice cubes. Mm. Now, I'm gonna also put in a frozen banana, half a banana. I've made it without the banana and with the banana. I like it better with the banana, but it, it tastes good without it as well. I'm just going to blend it. Okay. Okay, now you're back to... Okay, and now we're going to serve it. And it's just a really lovely, especially if it's a, a nice uh, hot day outside and you want a little, you know, frappuccino tasting instant coffee, mocha. Yum. So good. Mmm. Looks oh, good. All wow. right. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Making a creamy cashew dressing, which just came upon accidentally when I was at my friend Linda's the other night. It's a really good dressing. Um, we're using a cup of cashews that have been soaked. I soaked them overnight. I don't think that's 100% necessary. And I threw in the date, uh, one date, to just add a little sweetness. To still take the pit out here. But cashews are so good for you. Do you know they're really the seed of a fruit? A fruit that's not very tasty. And it's it's kind of funny looking. And... Um, they probably need a machine to get the cashew part off, which is kind of on the end. Um, but they're actually a lower fat nut than all the other nuts. They're high in all sorts of flavanols. Actually have shown to stop cancer cells from dividing. Wow. Um, yeah, they're really, really good for you. And um, That's good to know. Yes. They're, they're, and the fact that they're a lower fat nut too, that kind of makes me feel better because I, I do tend to like to love nuts. and. Uh, but these nuts and seeds are good, healthy fats that um, do not promote weight gain. You can probably go crazy with them, though, if you love nuts like I could. So, uh, <laughs> And then we're going to put in some, uh, I put in a little bit of uh, garlic and some fresh ginger mm -hmm. that I just peeled. I will start with uh, this much and then maybe add a little bit more. And then a cup of fresh water and we can add a little bit more and a little bit of salt. You know, if a recipe calls for kosher salt, which this one doesn't, but I just um, found out that kosher salt is a little bit more airier and less likely that you're going to oversalt something. So if a recipe does call for kosher salt, make sure you use kosher salt. Uh, otherwise, you will oversalt your recipe. Just a little side note there. I added a little more ginger originally, so adjust seasonings to where you like it, and um, I needed a, you know, a little more salt, so you have to always taste at the end and see where you need an adjustment. 
a little lemon juice is probably what I forgot to write that's uh, I think I put in the original recipe. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that in the recipe and add that. You need a little bit of lemon juice. Again, this is going to be up to you to decide how much you like to give it a little bit of twang mm -hmm. with, that, uh, with that ginger. Oh, I bet that will be good. Mm -hmm. okay. Got a little bit more salt. And, uh, and another thing of salt. Yeah. <laughs> here but this is a nice just a, a, a very healthy dressing for you know for um, steamed veggies or baked veggies or on a kale or on a salad so enjoy this one okay we're gonna make some yummy mini falafel and we're gonna bake them so there's no added fat or oil which is so fabulous because falafels although you know, they're usually healthy ingredients. They deep fry them and, you know, anything deep fried with all that saturated fat and oil is just not, you know, our optimal healthy option. So again, with your machine running, drop in your garlic, which is a good way to break up the garlic a little bit. And in this little container, I have the flaxseed, ground flaxseed that's been one tablespoon that's been mixed with three tablespoons of water. And it ends up getting like this nice gelatinous kind of, um, situation here that this is our egg replacer. So instead of using an egg which is full of cholesterol, we are going to use flaxseed which is really, really healthy. So we put in a, a can of rinsed and drained garbanzo beans or chickpeas and we have about a fourth of a cup of parsley and cilantro. Yummy herbs, good for us. Get some of the heavy metals out with good, nice fresh uh, herbs. And then some green onions. And then we're going to do a fourth of a cup of flour of choice. I'm using oat flour, but you can use any flour you like. Then we have some cumin and baking powder and salt and the flax. We're just going to mix this up and then um, maybe adjust our seasonings and then we'll make little balls and flatten them and bake it. Very easy. Yeah, I, I like it. It's not totally, totally mush. And then if you have a melon baller, this is a nice... Um, tool that you can use to just make a little ball and then flatten it out a little bit on our baking pan. We're going to preheat the baking pan to allow for better browning and I'm not sure I have 100% perfected the time in the oven on these but uh, what I suggested is probably going to work. Um, I'm just still maybe would you might want to mess with trying to keep the moisture in yet brown the outside so you might want to put them under the broiler. Um, let you work with that but this, this should work fine. I made a batch last night. So, so I think there's about two dozen or so, I didn't count them, but the falafel just kind of patted them out a little bit into little patties, and now we're going to bake them. And these are the falafels right out of the oven. They're just a little bit browned on both sides because I did flip them, so they turned out great. Once these are cool, you can freeze them in a little plastic baggie if you don't eat them all. Mm. I'm going to make a quinoa tabbouleh. Uh, another alternative to using the bulgur, um, and I, I, like you've probably heard me say before, I like to bake my grains in the oven, it's just easy, and so I did a cup of the uh, dried quinoa to two cups of water. Um, the quinoa is, you could buy it in bulk and it's not too expensive, it is a wonderful grain to have on hand, it's just full of all the essential amino acids, very high in protein, totally high, and it's just loaded with antioxidants, so it's a great wonderful grain. You could um, just do so much with it. And and when I cooked it, I also put a little seasoning in there. And that's another thing that you can do when you're doing your grains is just um, add some seasoning for the cooking process. So I'm going to put some green onions in this. And we've got some cucumbers. I like to seed my cucumbers. So you just take a, take a spoon and um, take the seeds out before you, you chop them. I'm going to put some nice lovely cucumbers in here and some fresh tomatoes that Linda chopped for me. Yeah, there and you go. <laughs> the mint. Linda did a great job with the mint and the parsley. And, and then we have a little for the dressing, a little bit of broth with a little bit of um, olive oil because we just, 
I'm going to do two tablespoons. And about a third of a cup of lemon juice. And, uh, and then a little bit of allspice. And this, and then we'll salt and pepper this up. And then, um, and that's it. And this is just a quick quinoa tabbouleh. You can um, probably run the herbs through your food processor too to kind of make it a, um, an easier recipe to prepare. All right, I'm gonna ask Linda to stir this up. We're gonna we're gonna taste it. <laughs> All right, we made some really good recipes today. Linda and Chris, they were liking them. They really were, and they're good for you and they're easy to do. So keep shopping at your local health food store and treating your body well. I'm Jill Ovnik. Thank you for watching. <laughs>